Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bomi Lim, researcher <coughs> of ETRI. Uh, it is an honor to present here BTS again. Today, I'm going to present field comparison test of LDM <coughs> and TDM based on 83.0. Last year, I presented LDM mobile field test result and our last year's project. In addition, at the end of the presentation, I showed uh, a short video clips in recording LDM and TDM mobile field test. So this year, I will talk about the result of that test. This is outline. Uh, first, I'm going to shortly talk about the multiplexing scheme, LDM. And after that, I will introduce facilities of the field test and then explain the fixed and mobile test result. Uh, in the BTS of last year, I already talked what is multiplexing, introduced LDM, uh, the newly proposed multiplex scheme for 83.0, and compared LDM with the traditional multiplexing scheme, FDM and TDM. So I briefly talk about these pages and so a few following pages. Uh, multiplexing is combining two or more different signals into one signal over common RF channel. <coughs> Left one is Left one is TDM and right one is FTM. Two services A and B are separately allocated in time and in frequency domain respectively. But in LDM, the layer division multiplexing, two services are superimposed and at constellation level. Therefore, they share the time and frequency resources. Uh, this page is an example of LDM constellation. When core layer uses the QPSK, and the enhanced layer uses 64 non-uniform constellation. According to the combined LDM signal has the 256 constellations, and according to the injection level between two layers, the constellation became more dense or wider. In LDM, each signal has different robustness. So a receiver first decode the most robust layer signal, the core layer QPSK, and then cancel it from the received signal. After that, the receiver starts the second robust upper layer signal, the enhanced layer 64 NUC. This page shows the LDM advantage <coughs> over TDM, theoretically. To see this, let's see the case. One service is for mobile reception, and another is for fixed reception. And injection level between two layers is 4 dB. The result is summarized in this table. In the case of mobile service, The 2.5 megabps data rate and minus 0.2 dB required SNR. For fixed service, data rate is 19 megabps and SNR required SNR is 18.7 dB. In case of TDM, to broadcast similar videos, quality video stream, the first 38% of time is assigned for mobile service, and the rest of 62% of time is assigned for fixed reception service. Therefore, the data rate and required SNL of mobile is 2.7 and 3.9 dB, and for fixed service, 19.9 and 20.8 dB. 
as a result, the SN required SNR of the TDM is 4.1 TB and 2.1 TB larger than LDM case. So this means if you have a broadcast company and you want to launch both fixed and mobile service by using LDM, you acquired 6.2 dB SNR gain. You will have wider coverage. The transmitter and receiver structure are composed of these blocks. In ATS 3.0, LDM combined operation, combining operation is conducted right after the symbol mapper. Therefore, while core layer and enhanced layer have independent BICM chain, they share the time, interval, framer, and OFDM waveform generator. So, core layer and enhanced layer should be set in the same FFT size. In the receiver side, the, the output of the core layer LDPC decoder is re-BICM re encoded and subtracted from the original received signal. After that, ERA decoding started. If the receiver wants to decode only core layer, which is the same case of our mobile field test, function in the red block area are unnecessary. So the mobile receiver can be implemented a little bit less complex manner. This is implementation, implemented modulator and demodulator hardware used in our test. The modulator has one FPGA, whereas the demodulator has two FPGA because the decoding process is more heavier than encoding part. Uh, these hardware fully comply with the ATS 3.0 standard. This is detailed system configuration for our field test. We consider about 250 millisecond frame length and 689 megahertz center frequency uh, and occupied bandwidth is 5.83 megahertz no carrier redu reducing technique in both cases in each case while they have the similar data rate but OFDM and BICM parameters are different the same OFDM parameters for both core layer and enhanced layer in LDM case. And we use convolutional delay time interval with depth 200 milliseconds for all cases. Field test facilities and results. The test period from June to 9, June to September last year, test area is Jeju Island. We conducted both mobile and fixed reception test. These are test items. For fixed test, topographical profile, reception power pattern, channel power, noise power, noise margin, channel profile, CNR were measured for all for four configurations, TDM subframe zero, subframe one, LDM core layer, enhanced layer. But mobile test, the test trace of moving vehicle, channel po power, decision of successful reception were measured for TDM subframe zero mobile case and LDM core layer mobile case. This is the whole block diagram for the field test. At transmission side, two signals, including 720p HD and 4K UHD video contents, respectively, were multiplexed and transmitted. In this test, we use different measurement vehicle for fixed reception below and mobile reception upper, upper case. The transmission tower. 
Um, the transmission site is located the Jeju Techno Park building, and the center frequency is channel 50, and the transmission power is 520 watts ERP. HPA output is 50 watts, and the transmitter antenna gain is almost 0 dB. We set lower power test for worst case. The transmission antenna is on the top of the building, like the red circle, and it has five meter heights from the top. The details are in the table. This is the transmitter equipment set inside of the transmitter buildings. Controlling and monitoring PC for the modulator and pre-corrector. And 83.0 exciter, HPA, and channel 15 mask filter. And the spectrum analyzer in order to uh, monitoring the output of the HPA. Also, modulator control PC is played as the uh, video server. Fixed reception facilities. On the left side, the fixed reception test vehicle with nine, me nine meters master antenna. On the top of it, there, is, there are directional antenna and omnidirectional antenna. Inside the vehicle, RF equipment, Spectrum analyzer, 83.0 receiver are installed in the re rear of the vehicle. In the front side, there are two display monitors to watch HD and UHD video contents. Now let me talk about the fixed reception test result. The field tests were performed at 20 measurement points, which are drawn as dotted circle line in left map. The average reception power is minus 65.27 dBm, and maximum power minus 48 at point 0.1, and the minimum power is minus 84 at point 0.6. This means that our field test was conducted under from weak signal strength to moderate signal strength. This is the reception power strength and the TOV of each configuration at each measurement point. Among 20 measurement point, successful decoding of UHD was only at 13 points. At the point of the gray box in the table, UHD video could not be served. On the other hand, in case of HD service, decoding was done at all points. In other words, HD for HD services, successful reception rate is 100%, whereas for UHD services, successful reception is only 65%. This is the reception success or fail mark on the map. Uh, the white circle indicates the reception success for both HD and UHD, and the red circle indicates that only HD services could be decoded due to the weak signal strength or harsh channel condition. This is summary of fixed test. Uh, this table shows theoretical TOV at under AWGN channel and laboratory test, laboratory test TOV under AWGN channel, and the field, field test TOV under real channel. The laboratory test was maximum 2 dB away from the theoretical TOV because the difference are caused by the implementation limitation, such as channel condition estimation and the LTPC decoding algorithm. But as you can see, 
the field test results are very close to the lab laboratory test. Um, this is mobile test reception, mobile reception facilities. On the top of the test vehicle, omnidirectional antenna with zero dBi antenna gain is installed. Inside of the test vehicle, ATS 3.0 receiver is installed and it is connected to the omnidirectional antenna and GPS receiver. Two laptops for receiver control and monitoring and uh, data analysis. This slide shows the test route with the field strength mark. The legend is set like this table. Uh, red means under the field strength is under minus 92 dBm. The pink is the field strength is minus 85 dBm, and the uh, uh, black uh, blue means the field strength strength is more than 78 dBm. Two results seems very similar, but they are slightly different because uh, we <coughs> uh, tested separately. We, uh, we analyzed the measurement data statistically. As seen in the previous pages, the field strength distribution between LDM, orange, and TDM, the blue, are very similar. The averaging field strength is 85 dBm, minus 85 dBm. The maximum field strength is minus 60 dBm. And the minimum strength is, field strength is minus 97.1 and minus 96.7 dBm. We also analyzed the test vehicle speed. Like field strengths, a speed distribution between LDM and TDM are very similar. <coughs> the average speed are almost the same, 3 point, 34 kilometers per hour. We limited the minimum speed at 3 kilometers per hour. So, this means that if the test vehicle's speed is less than three kilometers per hour, the system does not record the result. And the maximum vehicle speed is 81 for LDM and 74 and TDM. The test route with mark of reception success and fail. Reception success and fail is measured and recorded at every one second. Green means reception success and black means reception fail. See the three red circles on the map. LDM has more reception success point, green marks, while the field strength is almost the same. Test The test route with mark of reception success and fail versus test route with mark with field strength in LDM case. See the yellow circles. Reception fail marks with the in left are along with the red mark right, which means field strength is less than minus 92 dBm. The test route with marks of reception success and fail versus test route with field strengths in TDM case. Also see the yellow circles. Reception fail marks left side are along with both red and pink marks in the right field strength figures, which means field strength is less than minus 85 dBm. Comparing to the previous slide, LDM shows more robust than TDM case. 
We deal the previous result from the test root figure with statistical analysis. ESR5, ESR5 is used as quality criteria for mobile reception. <coughs> uh, reception success and fail is decided at every one second. That means if there is <coughs> at least one hit or one error in given one second, the reception fail is recorded. About 150 frames and 60 frames are transmitted during one second for LDM and TDM case. We consider 95% successful reception rate, the green line, which means one second error in given 20 seconds duration at given field strengths. If the field strength is more than minus 90 dBm, the 95% of more mobile service in LDM signal can be recorded and successfully, recovered successfully. Also, if the field strength is more than 85, 84 dBm, the 95% of mobile service in TDM signal can be recovered successfully. This means LDM shows 6 dB better performance than TDM. Uh, this result is also well aligned with the, our laboratory test. This is conclusion. Um, LDM is multiplexing technique to combine two or more, more services based on the constellation superposition scheme. LDM was proposed and accepted as baseline technology for 83.0 standard. LDM shows 6 dB performance gain over TDM system in theoretically. We verify performance gain LDM over TDM by conducting field test in Jeju Island. LDM system is working very well in real field environment as same as the last year. And the performance gain between two multiplexing schemes still remains in both fixed reception and mobile reception. So the broadcaster can provide more robust and flexible frequency efficiency services with ATSC 3.0. Thank you. So we do have a minute or two. Does anyone have a question for Bomi? Please use the microphone. Could you state what, what the white noise threshold was for your LDM mode versus your TDM mode? Oh, white noise is uh, maybe uh, the required SNR is minus 0 0.2 dB in core layer and uh, maybe uh, wait. Okay. And uh, in for in the layer is 80.7 dB. So you had about a 20 dB difference between yeah, thresholds between two, of the two. Yeah. So the LDM would have to perform better. Yeah. I think your slide 21 with the maps showing the successful gaps. Um, nope, it's beyond that 20. It's in the 20s, so yeah, this one. But you had the circles showing where the gaps were filled in. Okay, maybe this one. Yeah, this one here. Yeah. Now, did when you had when you qualified a reception success for that LDM versus TDM? Was this the combination of ultra high def and HD signals? What? Was this was the signal you were you were decoding? Yeah. You had mentioned earlier that you were broadcasting both ultra-high-definition UHD yeah. Yeah. and high-definition 
HD. Yeah. Was that the case also with this? No, this is only for the HD mobile service. Case. This was only the yeah. HD. Thank you. Just wanted to. Okay. okay. So thank you. Uh, and in appreciation, James Cameron. <laughs>